projected images number one. Our judge Jenny Graff comments, I have tried to make suggestions that I think may make your images stronger. Don't take them as criticism, please. Just as things you could consider trying. If you try and don't like the result, that is fine. They are, after all, only suggestions. Catching the sun. This is a beautifully coloured flower in a well composed and exposed image. The petals are reasonably sharp, but the centre of the flower, which by virtue of its strong colour is the point of interest, is not in focus. This is another situation where focus stacking would be of benefit if you want to make the flower centre the focal point in the image. Alternatively, you could keep it sharp and leave the petals soft. It's definitely an image I would retake until you get the effect you're looking for. Done and dusted. This flower certainly is way beyond it. Interestingly, sometimes these flowers can, can be more interesting and even more photogenic than when they are alive. The textures here are interesting, but there is an out of focus area in the center, which is somewhat distracting. This is an ideal situation to take the subject inside and use focus stacking to get a subject that is entirely in focus. It would also be good to have a tiny bit more room to the right. The centre of the flower is just a little close. Drowned country bones. That is a very interesting countryside. The hills are completely bare. It is a stark image. No colour in the sky and just the browns and greys of the hills. There are trees but they are difficult to see. It is an image with a lot of contrast, perhaps too much. And as a result, it isn't the type of image that keeps the viewer enthralled. There are a lot of areas of deep shadow and lifting these would help, especially those on the foreground hill on the right. I would experiment with this image to see what you can do with it. Enchanted Forest. This is an image with a difference. The colours are attractive, and the trees have been smoothed out to make them look unrealistic. Although the foreground ones have lost their mystery and contrast quite a lot with the rest of the image. Leaving the top left corner completely dark adds mood to this scene. But the background light on the right does the opposite. It's an interesting concept that you could work on and refine. Gateway. This is an interesting created image with bright lights and attractive colours. The spaces between gateway lights are not even and there is a blue light in the background behind the gateway sign in the top left area. If you are going to create a symmetrical image, try to make sure it's exactly symmetrical and also present it as a central object rather than off to one side as it is here. Iceland Poppy 1 these flowers have an unusual centre that many photographers will try to capture at one stage or another. This is a very simple image that is well composed and exposed. There is a greyish area in the lower left corner that could be cloned out. The image is slightly soft throughout. With close-up photography it is better to be either very sharp or obviously softened for artistic purposes. Pulpit rock. This is an aptly named rock and is a good subject. The image is being taken in what looks like the evening light, which has resulted in some night, lovely highlights on the rocks. This is something that could be used to advantage by staying even later and watching the light change. If you do this, a tripod and a longer exposure will smooth the water and create a completely different effect. Worth a try. The image is not completely sharp. Composition is okay but it is worth trying different angles to try to maximise the textures in the rock and perhaps move it off centre a little. There is a small protrusion on the right above sea level and that needs to be cloned out. The big problem with this image is the large number of sensor spots that are clearly visible in the sky. It is always a good idea to check for both dust on the lens and sensor and clean them if present. Ready for takeoff too. This is an attractive image overall, with good colours and exposures. Fence wire can detract from images, but in this one it gives context. The foreground grass is good, apart from one stalk, which is at an angle to the rest and very intrusive. If you are able to, 
I would clone this out. The bird has been over sharpened a little, as can be seen from the white line around it in some of the higher contrast areas. I suspect this has created some issues as it has been smoothed out using noise reduction to the point where all detail in the feathers has gone and it looks a little unrealistic. This is an image I would experiment with to see what you can achieve. Sideshow munchies. This image falls into the street photography category, a genre of photography that records everyday life in a public place. Here multiple people have been captured around a takeaway store, all involved in the normal activities one would expect to see. It is a bright and colourful image that is well composed. Exposure is difficult in high contrast lighting such as this, and this can be seen in the blown out bags above the counter and the dark figures in the foreground. In a situation such as this, there are several options. One is to attempt to correct it in post-processing, which is often quite successful. To do it in camera, you can use exposure bracketing, which unless you do it quickly, will result in some movement. Alternatively, you can use fill flash to light the foreground. Set the camera so that the bright areas are correctly exposed and lower the power of the flash or flash exposure compensation, which will make the image look more natural. Doing this will allow you to use faster shutter speed, which when you are hand holding the camera will keep your images sharper. This image is, is a little soft throughout. It is worth experimenting with this technique because you can get some stunning shots. Spreading myrtle. This magnificent old tree has been placed on a mound of dirt among a lot of younger trees, and it certainly dominates the image. It has been well composed, although the keystoning on the left is far more marked than on the right, which makes it look unbalanced. A lot of processing has gone in this image, and there is evidence of this throughout. There are multiple smudged areas, and a halo around the central upper branches looks unnatural as does the mound of dirt at the base of the tree, where on the right there is an area that looks unfinished beside two circular twigs that have been cloned. There is also a large area on the horizontal upper right branch that has not been well finished. Creating and modifying images can be rewarding, but attention must be paid to the details. There should be no evidence of processing. This is one I would revisit and tidy up some of the areas that are visible. Striped Sun Orchid. This is a beautiful little orchid, but is not shown to its true potential in this image because it is a little too dark and it doesn't stand out against the background. The depth of field allows the entire flowers to be in focus, but unfortunately this does not create enough softness in the background, which is actually quite messy and distracting. In this situation, it is worth, if possible, getting down low so the flower is against the sky. Another way to avoid a background like this is to focus stack. Use the wider aperture to keep the depth of field shallow and take multiple exposure at different focal lengths. Lastly, you can replace the background with one of your own. A coloured scrim can be useful in this situation. Surf's up. What a magnificent wave. It's very impressive against the rocks. Composition is good, as is exposure. The colour in the rocks adds interest. The image is over sharpened, as can be seen by the white halo along the edges of high contrast areas. This has made the rocks look unnatural and the sky a little grainy, something that often happens in this situation. Revisit the image and reprocess it, taking care with the sharpening. Bailed hay. This is a peaceful country scene that lends itself to photography. Composition is good, and even though the two foreground bales of hay are quite central, it isn't a problem in this image. I would tone down the highlights just a little, or use a graduated filter in post-processing to selectively drop the foreground exposure just a little. There are some areas on the hay bales that are overexposed. There is a vertical cutoff in the clouds in the top left hand corner that does not look natural and I'm not sure what has happened here but it needs to be fixed. At the same time it would be good to remove the dark speck 
just above the tree line to the right of the image. It could be a bird, but maybe dust on the lens. Either way, it would be better not there. Coloured Johns. What a find. The bright colours and shapes of these structures are a photographer's dream and can be photographed from numerous angles and in different light to give multiple and different images. This image has good composition, colours and exposure. The sky is a little grainy and the image is being slightly over sharpened as can be seen by the white halos around each roof. If these johns are anywhere near where you live, it is definitely worth visiting them at different times of day. You will get some stunning images. Flying Duck Orchid. I can certainly see where the common name of these orchids comes from. This is a good, clear, close-up shot of a flower that is only about two centimetres in size. The background is soft, and even though it is virtually split in half as far as colour goes, this isn't a problem and actually complements the flower. There are some specular highlights which can be hard to avoid when given that the flowers have shiny surface. The use of a diffuser to soften the light will help this. There are also shadows which could be eliminated by using a fill flash with a diffuser. It is an attractive flower that you could photograph many times from all angles and in all light and it's worth doing this to see what variations you can create. Divided River. This is a highly processed image that has been deliberately made to look quite unnatural. There is a lot to look at. The ferns, the mossy banks, the rocks and the water. The improbable water patterns are, fa are fascinating. The image overall is most unusual, different and interesting because of that. Donald Duck. This is another of the tiny orchids we have seen in another image. The background is very attractive in this image, but unfortunately the light has not been kind to the photographer and is far too harsh, as can be seen in the blown out area on the bud. Using a diffuser will avoid this, even if you have to rope in someone into helping you hold, by holding it in the appropriate place. There are also shadows, and as mentioned before, the use of a fill flash with a diffuser will overcome this. Friend or foe. This is an interesting showdown. I wonder who will win? The two animals are in focus, but in this image, a shallower depth of field would have made the two combatants really stand out, as the background is quite untidy and a bit distracting. Exposure is good considering this was taken in sunlight. You have avoided shadows on the animals. It's a good opportunistic image. Ghost fungi. You are lucky to find this bioluminescent fungi. Although Tasmania is one of the areas where it grows, it is not easy to find and is also quite a challenge to photograph, requiring planning to have the right equipment at hand. The green of the fungi is very attractive, as are the shapes of the individual mushrooms. You have done well to get this image. It's something I have yet to do. Well done. Green tree python. What strange creatures these are when viewed up close. And from the number and size of coils, it is a very large python. The eyes are pin sharp, but the narrow depth of field has not allowed the front of its head to be in focus, which is a shame, as that area has very interesting features. There is no context in this image, but given the lighting, I suspect it was taken at night, and you have used a flash, or possibly a torch. There are a lot of specular highlights throughout, and the easiest way to avoid these in this type of situation is to use a diffuser to soften and spread the light. If you have the opportunity to photograph another python, try experimenting with the lighting and depth of field and I'm sure you'll be pleased with the result. Judgment. These three men are all engrossed in discussion about the bikes, which have the fence on one side and the men on the other, confining them as the subject of the image. Exposure is good and you have avoided the highlights that are easy to get on reflective surfaces. Colours are good and the image is sharp where it needs to be. The men do look a little crowded in the corner of the image and leaving a bit more room around them, particularly on the left, would improve this. Painter at work. The posture of this artist shows that he is absorbed in his work.
and you have captured this well. Exposure is good and the colours are true, with the red box adding a splash of extra colour. The bag is chopped off at the bottom and it would be better if it was there in entirety. The background does not enhance the image and sometimes something as simple as changing your position can make a significant difference. In this situation, you can get a completely different and interesting image by asking permission to stand behind the artist and have him, his painting and his subject in the image. This is something I would definitely experiment with. Christmas lilies. You have done a great job to capture all the detail in the foreground flower, the texture of the petals, the stigma and the stamens, as well as the individual grains of pollen. My only suggestion, crop a little at the bottom only to remove the folded back petals of the lower left flower. Your image will be more panoramic format, which will suit it well. Gazing outside. It would be lovely to sit on that chair and look out at the beautiful, restful view. You have done an excellent job getting the exposure right in such a high contrast lighting. The image is well composed and the horse gazing inside adds an ironic twist. In front. The only sharp object in the image is certainly in the lead, with the competition a fair way back from the looks of it. The angle on the bikes shows how quickly they must ride in order to win. The background bikes are soft, but some detail is still obvious, and having them there gives context. It's a good shot. Well done. Jennifer's garden. Jennifer certainly has an interesting garden. This composite image has been well done, adding detail to the foreground only, and this has resulted in some very interesting looking flowers. The patterns on the petals are fascinating as they are sharply in focus areas of the other plant. I have no idea what this is, but it is certainly attractive. The combination of the sharp foreground and soft background has created an almost 3D effect, which is very attractive. Try to avoid having partial bright objects in the foreground. This can be very distracting and draws the eye away from the centre and out of the image. Compare the partial petals at the bottom with those at the top and you will see that the ones at the top are not nearly as intrusive. This is a clever image and has been well done. King River Bridge. This is a colourful image that well demonstrates the pollution of the King River from nearby mines. The yellow brown water contrasts nicely with the green of the trees and the rust coloured railway bridge completes the colour scheme. The leading lines provided by the bridge and track draw the eye straight down to the curve in the rails and onto the forest beyond. The image is sharp and composition is good, although a little more room on the left would take the girder away from the edge and bring it more into the image. Good work. Moving, O2. Panning shots can be a challenge, but you have done it well. The bike and rider are sharp against the soft moving background. The concentration of the driver is clearly visible as he focuses on what is in front of him. This is a good action shot that is not as easy to photograph as one might think. Spotted partalote. This is a wonderfully sharp image of a colourful little bird that we would never get to see in such detail in real life. Exposure and colours are great. I suspect the image is being cropped, and if so, I would revisit and allow a little bit more room at the top so the bark isn't disappearing out of the image. Things that lead to the edge and out tend to draw the eye out as well. If the branch it is sitting on is small, it would be worth considering putting the whole thing in with a little room below it. If it is large branch, I would leave it as it is. This is a great nature image. Well done. Tasmanian Waratah. These are beautifully coloured and shaped flowers which are highlighted by the cluster of leaves behind each one. The flowers are in focus but don't have the depth of field they could. Working with the light would improve this. Having an extra light and using a diffuser will bring out the texture in the flowers. The composition is attractive and allowing just a little room at the top and the bottom of the image 
so the leaves are not so close to the edges would be good. The doghouse. I love this shot. It shows that a rundown old shed can make a very interesting image. The colours are great, the background gives context, and composition and exposure are good. Good work for seeing the potential for an image in this old structure. As an aside, the time I was judging this, one of my sons had just replaced the roof on an old chook shed that I'm just going to start using. And when I saw this image, I couldn't resist showing it to him and suggesting he should have done it this way. After all the hard work he put in, I don't think he was amused. Two Point Landing 2. What an incredible reflection. The image is sharp and well exposed, and the uniformity of the water provides a soft and non-intrusive background. This is the type of situation where continuous shooting mode comes in handy, because taking a burst of Im images gives you several to choose from. In this image, there is little context, and an image taken a fraction of a second later would show the disruption in the water as the feet come in contact with it. Almost all of the reflection would remain, and there would be a connection between it and the bird. You may prefer the image as it is, but it is good to experiment. After bathing, this is a great action shot, which you were lucky to get. The bird is moving, so parts of it are not going to be sharp, but the sharpest part of the bird is on the tail rather than the head. I do realise that it is almost Im an impossible shot to get sharp. The colours of the bird against the green background really make it stand out, and the water droplets are fantastic. Good work, and I wish I had birds at my place so I could try to get images like this. Cactus flower. This is a lovely image. The black background is perhaps a little stark, but it was most likely taken with a flash, which will do this. Evening light, ocean beach. This is a lovely image that demonstrates the beauty of a beach sunset. The horizon is straight, one of my bugbears. The lighting is well controlled and the colours are lovely. The patterns on the sand and the birds add to the overall effect. There are a couple of sensor spots in the sky. One is on the left and the other is about a third of the way across from the left. It is a good idea to always look at these because lenses and sensors invariably get dust on them and need to be regularly checked and cleaned. If you see spots in an image, they are easy to remove in post-processing. Feeding time. You are lucky to be in a position where you have the opportunity to get images like this. You have managed to keep the birds in focus against a soft and beautifully coloured background, which can be a challenge at times. Composition is good, exposure is great, and the colours are true. Well done. Sunset on the Apostles. This is a beautiful image, well composed and with great colours of the evening light. The long exposure has allowed you to both capture the light and movement to the water. Great work. Victory's Enduring Hollowness. An interesting title and an even more interesting image. The treatment you have given this leaves the viewer with so much to look at with no distractions at all. It is a fantastic image that one could hang on a wall and look at for ages. Excellent work. View of Lavender. This is another great image. Excellent composition, great colour, leading lines, good exposure, excellent work. Snug Falls. This is a well composed and restful image. The longer exposure has not only allowed enough light into the image, but has also resulted in the milky appearance of the water, which is very attractive. It's a very attractive image. Well done. Fragility. This is a beautifully executed image where the concept of fragility is demonstrated in so many ways. A lot of thought has gone into getting everything right. The soft colours, the body art, the background and the addition of butterflies, vines and flowers. The expression and posture of the model are perfect for this image. A final comment that is taking things to the nth degree, so feel free to disregard it. One of the feathers has a hard edge at its tip, which could be softened. It's a magical image. Great work. Girl in a Bubble. 
This is a fascinating image that immediately captivates the viewer. The colours are beautiful and there is so much to see that one could look at it for ages and still find something new. I don't know which is more impressive, the ability to come up with the concept like this or the skill required to execute it so well. This is exceptional work, well done. Missy having fun. Missy is certainly enjoying herself and this is well captured in this image. The dog is sharp and the water splashes around her feet are great. You have exposed and avoided highlights on the water and composition and colour are good. This is a great action shot, well done. Mist on the Huon. This is a beautiful and restful image where the mist has obliterated the horizon, making the boats and their reflections appear to be floating in the air. The muted colours are great and the image is well exposed. Allowing a little more room at the top would balance the image better. It is an excellent image and I hope one day I will come across a scene like this so I can hopefully do it justice like this photographer has. Night Shift. This is a beautifully exposed image of some very complex metalwork and it is as sharp as a tack. The colours are good and the long exposure has created silkiness in the water and the steam from the chimneys. Excellent work. Dear Sarah, this is a great concept. The shallow depth of field is great, although having both words in focus would be better as those words are the main point of the image. The background, although soft, is quite dominating and somewhat intrusive and takes the eye away from the paperwork, especially the light upper right corner. This is an image I would retake, but in a different setting. Or, if you wanted to retain this one, try it from a different angle. George Bass Coastal Walk. What a view. And those rays of sunlight must have been beautiful to see. There is not a lot of contrast in this image, so some of the features don't stand out as well as they could, and it looks rather flat. It has been over-sharpened. I wonder what it looked like in colour, and whether or not those rays of sunlight were actually golden. If so, it would be better presented as a colour image. You are lucky to see this. Hanging straws. This is an interesting and confusing image, especially with the arm off to the left. On the right, the sunbeams and the water are quite beautiful. The hanging straws are quite unattractive and slice the image in half, as well as being so dark there are no features to identify them. Some sort of hanging vegetation. On the left, the arm defies explanation. It's a most intriguing image, but one that has me completely baffled. Old mill engine. This is an interesting bit of machinery to be in this setting. It is nicely in focus with good composition, but there is not a lot of contrast in the image and the engine is lost against the background. This image may have been better in colour, which would certainly separate the foreground from the background, although it is not possible to know this without seeing the image in colour. Spitfires. Doctor Who's Next Monsters. They're certainly not attractive, and these look like rear ends to me because there is no definite head visible. Focus is good, as is the shallow depth of field. The bits of foreground grass are somewhat intrusive, but when photographing things on the move, it isn't always possible to avoid extraneous objects. White flower. This is an attractive flower, but the image is too dark and needs to be brought to life, and this will have to be done in post-processing. There are many ways of doing this, increasing exposure, then toning down the shadows, increasing the highlights, increasing the whites. You would have to try all of them to see which gave the best result. The aim will be to make that white flower look white and to lift the background at the same time so there is not an enormous contrast. This will make your image much stronger. Country Church. This building is so neat and tidy, it looks like a little doll's house. Everything in it is uniform, right down to the placement of the building in the image and the featureless sky. It is taken exactly from the centre of front and it makes it look two-dimensional. Placing something in it 
even just a person walking a dog would give it a life. Revisit this one and see what you can do. Harvest done. This is a well-balanced image with a fantastic sky that is being taken from just the right angle. There is a tiny bit of blowout with loss of detail in the centre foreground bale. This could possibly be partially corrected in post-processing, but it isn't a major issue in this image. There is some keystoning, which is causing distortion of the bale on the left. This can be corrected using the transform feature in post-processing. It would obviously fix the leaning telegraph poles at the same time. To do this, however, there must be enough room in the image to lose a bit on the sides and bottom, so it may not have been possible here. Old Boat Shed. This is a well-composed image that is slightly soft throughout. There is some definition in the sky on the right, but nothing on the left. I'm not sure if you tried using the dehaze feature, but it will often show something that initially isn't visible. The building is leaning to the left. There is nothing in the image to give context to this, so it is something I would correct in post-processing. Twisted. This magnificent tree skeleton makes a great subject, and it has been set against a sky full of character. The composition is good. There is some shadowing on the tree which adds to the twisted appearance. There are fence wires in the foreground, but they are fine and not intrusive. The vegetation in the right foreground is not particularly attractive. Did you, did you use the clarity tool in processing? Overall, it is an effective image, so well done. Fixer Upper. If that is fixed up, it will be in a beautiful private setting. I wonder if it has a view. The house is nicely framed by the background trees and the foreground shrubs, and the angle from which it has been taken is excellent. Detail has been retained in the sky. It would be worth cropping a tiny bit off the bottom, leaving the framing. This would bring the house forward in the image, which would make it more powerful. Flower Mill. This is a great perspective, and in fact the only one that can be used when you're standing on the ground looking up. The lighting is great, and although the sky is empty, the complicated veins of the mill provide all detail needed. Not all of the right side vein is present, but it doesn't detract from the image. It is sharp from bottom to top. Good work. Laying around. That expression is classic, and combined with the posture, has created an image full of character. Composition is excellent. The background is a little dark, particularly at the bottom, where there is almost a black void. This may have been technically difficult to achieve, even in post-processing, without adding significant grain. But this can be overcome to a certain extent. Having some texture at the bottom would also decrease the impact of the right foot that is out of focus. Yeah, worth a try. Small cataract. This is a lovely image and is very effective in black and white. There are some dark areas with loss of detail, but in this image, they don't cause any issues. Images taken with a longer exposure that have water which turns milky and shows movement are attractive, and this is very evident here, where there is no colour to distract and the focus is on the water. Steams up. These old locos and their steam are much more photogenic than our modern trains. At least they are to me. This is a very sharp image that shows the steam beautifully. Composition is good, although there could be a little too much bank on the left, and cropping it just to the left of the tree would be worthwhile. The original format does not have to be retained, and sometimes it is better to dispense with it. You could perhaps also slightly increase the exposure, or at least lift the shadows, which would allow more of the detail in the loco to be visible. Tranquil evening. Fishing in the evening is indeed a relaxing thing to do. This is a great silhouette, and you are to be commended for taking the shot from an angle where the heads didn't disappear into the darkness of the opposite bank. Composition is excellent. You must have waited until they all got to perfect positions. Well done. There is some vignetting in the top left, and I suspect you have cropped the image because it isn't there on the right. You can either add it or remove it. 
but the sides do not need to be the same. Mount Murchison, a beautiful image, simple, moody, and one that you could just sit and look at. But there is a very obvious sensor spot and a couple that are less obvious. Look for these and remove them because they simply should not be there. Apart from that, it is excellent work. Naxian Moonrise. This is a beautiful image that is sharp, well composed, and has excellent light control. Not only that, it looks like a photographer's heaven. The island of Naxos is now definitely on my list of places to visit. Northwest Bay Evening Light. This is a very attractive scene and there is a nice balance between the left and right sides of the image. There is a lot of redundant foreground and if you crop this just to above the dark area on the left and made it a panoramic, you would have a much stronger image. It would also help to lift the shadows just a bit little, as the lower branches of the trees behind the sheds are a little too dark. You could have a superb image here with just a few modifications. Tasman Bridge 4-2. This is an incredibly sharp image and you are to be commended. The starbursts of light are particularly effective and the patterns in the water are great. On the other side of the river, there is a brightness above the end of the bridge but a dark area below, and lifting the shadows just a tiny bit in the dark area would fix this. Great work. Too many miles. This is a great character shot and the lighting is excellent. The only disconcerting feature is the right eye, which almost looks as if he has conjunctivitis, although it could also be an old injury. Irrespective of the cause, it is a good idea to do the housework when there is something like this present. Even though it may be part of him, the sticky looking eyelashes are not pleasant to look at and continually draw the eye away from the rest of the image, which is a shame. Winter Gales. That looks cold and no doubt was. It's a great shot of not only the clouds, but also the snow covered land. Presenting this as a monochrome image has added power to the sky, making it look quite threatening. My only comment is that the small hill would be better slightly off centre. However, it's a great image as it stands. Take it off me. This is a great image, full of action, sharp and well composed. The light has been handled particularly well given that this would have been taken during the day. The expressions tell the story. Great work. The Racer. This is a great action shot that is amazingly sharp. One can even see the character lines around the eyes. The expression of concentration and determination immediately catches the attention and holds it. Great work. <laughs>